factorize means find the factors of something. But when we have an expression like an x squared or an x, that's going to mean brackets. In fact, when we have an expression with an x squared, an x, and a number, it's going to mean double brackets, double the fun. So we're going to have a single bracket here, and then another single bracket here. So a double bracket in total. When you see an x squared on its own, there's one thing we know straight away. It's going to be x and x at the front of the brackets. On the left, as it were, x and x. Why is that? Because we know x times x gets us to x squared. So that's one thing for sure. When there's an x squared on its own, we know there's going to be an x on the front and an x on the front. With those super hard ones, when there's a number as well at the front, for example, 3x squared, there's a slightly different method to factorize, which I'll do in a different video. But in this video, it's always going to be just a single x squared. So it's always going to be an x on the front and an x in the front. Now, what's the trick, though, to finding out the numbers? That's what everyone finds a bit tricky. Well, here's the really important thing to remember. We need to find two numbers which multiply together to get the number on its own and add or subtract to get the number next to the x. This is the number one mistake students make, is they confuse which one's which. The two numbers have to multiply together to get the number on its own. See, it's just plus 10. There's no 10x or anything. And add or subtract to get the number next to the x, the 7. Just notice it's next to the x, 7x. That order is really important. It can't be multiplies to get 7 and adds or subtracts to get 10. It has to be multiplies to get 10, add or subtracts to get 7. What different combinations multiply to get 10? Let's start there. Because adding or subtracting to get 7 will take forever. I mean, there's 6 and 1, 5 and 2, it'll take forever. But multiplies to get 10, well, there's only two different combinations. There'd be 10 and 1, or 5 and 2. There's no other combination using whole numbers where it multiplies together to get 10. So which one do we use, though? How do we know which one's right? Which one of these two combinations can you add or subtract to get 7? With 10 and 1, you could add them and you'd get 11, or you could subtract them and you'd get 9, or even minus 9, for example, if you did 1 take away 10. But you can't get 7, no matter what you do. But with 5 and 2, you can get 7. Simply positive 5 plus 2. So that is what you write inside the brackets. Plus 5 plus 2. And we have factorized this expression. If you don't quite believe that that's true, like who made up this magical rule of adding and subtracting to get 7 and multiplying to get 10? How does that work? Well, let's test it out. x times x is x squared. And the method I'm going to very quickly use to test it is the FOIL method, which you may have heard of. Front, outside, inside, last. So front, x times x, is x squared. Outside, x times 2 is 2x. Then we have inside, so 5 times x, which is 5x. And then finally, last, which would be 5 times 2, which is indeed 10. Front, outside, inside, last. Was I like to remember it? Front times front, front times back, back times front, back times back. And all of these things added together will get back to our expression. The 2x plus the 5x becomes a 7x. And so we get x squared plus 7x plus 10. We get back to our expression. That just quickly proves that this method of adding and subtracting and multiplying together does actually get back to our expression. But let's try one a bit more quickly now using our magical technique. Okay, I'll keep that adding and subtracting just to remind you. How's about something not too dissimilar to x squared minus 8x 
plus 12. I'll give you a hard one. Which one? Which one do they have to times together to get? Times together to get the 12, because it's the number on its own. Add or subtract to what? That would be the minus 8. Add or subtract to get to minus 8. Notice, though, there's an x squared on its own. So what can we do straight away? We can write an x and an x. Because we know straight away, because it's an x squared, when we factorise, which is what they'll ask, the exam would simply ask, factorise. We know because there's an x squared, it's going to be an x and an x in the front. OK, two numbers which times together to get 12. I can think of three combinations, actually. 12 and 1, 6 and 2, and 4 and 3. So this is where the critical test comes in. Adding and subtracting to get minus 8. 12 and 1. Well, we could add them to get 13, or subtract them to get 11, or minus 11. But we can't get minus 8, so it can't be that. Let's cross that out. 6 and 2. Well, we could add them to get 8, but how would we get minus 8? Well, actually, we could. This is one example where students often can't imagine getting to minus 8. Like, how do you get minus 8? 6 take away 2 is 4. Even 2 take away 6 is minus 4. But what about minus 6 and minus 2? Minus 6 and minus 2 would get you to minus 8. And yes, you are allowed to have a double minus. They subtract to get minus 8. And if you're wondering, oh, how would minus 6 and minus 2 multiply to get 12? Well, the, the minuses would cancel, wouldn't they? Minus 6 times minus 2. The minuses cancel, so indeed you get 12. So we've got our answer. And we can just quickly check 4 and 3, you can't get 8, even if you add them or subtract them. So we know the answer is going to be minus 6 and minus 2. We don't need to test that. We've seen from the previous example that they do indeed multiply out to get what we're looking for. Let's give you a super hard one. For example, x squared minus x as let's keep it all in uh, lowercase x squared minus x minus 12. And we have to factorize that. Remind me which number we have to find two numbers which multiply together to get, and which number is it add or subtract? It's multiplied together to get the minus 12 because it's on its own. It doesn't have an x next to it. And it's add or subtract to get the minus 1. Notice it's a bit harder because I didn't actually write any number. But there is a number there, minus 1. So add or subtract to get minus 1 and multiply to get minus 12. Is it possible? The combinations for 12, as before, are 12 and 1, 6 and 2, 4 and 3. Let's have a look at those and stretch this out so I can put them all on one page. Now, which of those combinations add and subtract to get you minus 1? Well, 12 and 1, that would get you 13, as we saw, or 11, but definitely not minus 1. Even 6 and 2, if you added them, it would be 8, or took them away, it would be 4, or minus 4, or minus 8, as we saw. But what about 4 and 3? How do you get minus 1 from 4 and 3? Is it 4 take away 3? It would be 3 take away 4. So 3 take away 4 is indeed minus 1. Notice the x squared on its own. Well, that means we can have the x at the front and the x at the front, as before. As always, in fact. And what did we say? We said 3 take away 4. So that's positive 3 and negative 4. There we have it, we've factorised. And if we multiplied out these brackets, we'd get back to our expression of x squared minus x minus 12, which is part of the beauty of factorising. It's almost like rearranging flowers. Put them in a different order, and they suddenly look a lot more beautiful.